you, 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 you must not watch this. I'm warning you. You, you can never unsee it. Paul, Paul, what are you doing? Uh, just the introduction to Sleep No More. Jesus, is it that bad? Honestly, this stuff just writes itself. I am not an animal. I am not an elephant. I'm Paul Ferry, and this is Time Ram, the Doctor Who podcast that takes a thing, rams it into another thing, and makes a third thing. Perhaps it's a thing of beauty. Perhaps it's a thing of unspeakable horror. Who knows? I don't. Perhaps my two co-hosts will know. It's Rupert Booth and Barry Williams. Oh, I had never seen a more depraved specimen of humanity. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. How are you both doing then? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah. How are you? I'm all right. Um, yeah. I'm all right. Yeah. 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 Good. Is it warm there? Oh, it's quite warm here. I'm feeling warm today. Oh, dear Christ, listener, listen to the three middle aged British men. <laughs> Hello, how are you? I'm all right. We're all right. You know, it's warm. <laughs> well, it's all right. Yeah. The weather like. Yeah. yeah. You see the match last night? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I did see the elephant man crossing the road, which was fun. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so tonight's mashup is the second Doctor, Patrick Troughton, in the Peter Capaldi... Well, I usually say classic, but I'm not sure that applies <laughs> in this case. It's Sleep No More. It's an um, episode. It, it's an episode. Yeah. It's, it's an episode. An episode. Yeah. It's a thing that happened, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, Sleep No More occurred once. An episode yeah. which was broadcast on television. Yes, that, yes. That, 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 that's a fact, listener. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and that's pretty much all we've got, I think, isn't it? So, yeah, well, this has been time round. So, thanks for seeing you both. Yeah, absolutely. Cheers. Yeah, I thought Trout was great. I was really diligent, and I watched it like the next the next day after we'd done our last recording. And you two took ages to get around. <laughs> ages. Yeah, just yeah. To get to get round of yeah. I, In fairness, I got there before Bass, though. I just I steeled <laughs> myself to it. I kind of oh, I'll just do it. Just get out of the way. You know, like like homework used to be. Yeah. I'm like yeah. all right, I've got to do it. Yeah. I, 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 I literally didn't think about it for a week and then thought, ah, yeah, I need to watch that thing. So, would you believe that Sleep No More is the only Doctor Who episode I had only seen once? Yeah. Wow. Until, until Time Round called me. Um, wow. Yeah. That's how impressed I was with it the first time around. Mm. I'm not sure. I think I probably have only seen it. I might have seen I, it twice. I've I never know. felt the need to, to watch it again. I remember I watched it in company and then we got drunk. Yeah, I think I have seen it twice. I mean, most of the Jodie Whittaker episodes I've only seen once, but uh, right. yeah. Sleep No More, I bought the Blu ray, so I watched it again. So, yeah, it. yeah, 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 yeah. But because it was there, yeah? Because it was there. Because, <laughs> because you, you know, bought it. Yeah. I bought yeah. it and paid for the damn episode. You're, you're going to damn well put yourself through it, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yeah. It's going to yeah. sit there for Quite four right. or five that's, minutes. This, this is yeah. that's, that's some, some kind of swinging satire on, um, <laughs> on, on the modern day commercialism. Yeah. <laughs> commercialism, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's why we, none of us like it, do we? Let's just be honest. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's you hard. Know. It's a it's a hard one to put your finger on why. So I, yeah, I said to Paris just just before you came on, I, I was saying I can't work out what's wrong with it. It should be yeah. there's a lot. It should have a lot going for it. It mm -hmm. has a lot going for it that all somehow just doesn't. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of good snippets, it's and it doesn't bits. even it doesn't even not do it catastrophically. Yeah, <laughs> you know the horns of nine one's tremendous fun to watch. Um, it's entertaining, and it's got great. This needed Graham Crowden or something like that. This needed the random Graham Crowden factor. Yeah. You know my oh. dreams of conquest. His face melts into sand. <laughs> sure, okay. Now Peter Capaldi's reaction to that. Now we're watching. Yeah. You know it, lads. Yeah, you know it too, listener. But it doesn't happen. Graham Crowden was dead. That's the main reason why it didn't well, yeah. happen. Well, yeah. I don't think it would have happened anyway. No. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe we can change that. We can. We can. We have the power. 
We do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it's better. It's better than my idea for that character, <laughs> which was Peter Glaze. <laughs> I can see this. I can see I this. Just, yeah. okay. I just thought somebody who, who wears glasses, Peter Glaze. <laughs> oh, Peter Pratt, actually. Yeah. Un- unmastered. Have you ever seen him? He's kind of Peter no, Glaze. Like, I don't, I don't know what he looks him. like. No, I don't know. There's a clip on a documentary, probably on the Deadly Assassin DVD, which shows him in some 1960s BBC play. And he kind of looks like Peter Glaze. He's got glasses on. Um, uh, he's yeah. not at all emaciated looking. Like had the, why you'd cast him? Voice. I always remember my uncle was a big Gilbert and Sullivan fan. Uh-huh. And he had these recordings of the Doily Cart Opera Company. Mm-hmm. And uh-huh. one of them had Peter Pratt in it. And I remember kind of seeing Lovely. this on the back of a record when I was a kid thinking, it can't be the same bloke. But it oh, is. It is. It is. Was we a, should, we should try singer. and track down these things and present them to the Time Ram audience. We should try yeah. and track down some of Heron Carvick's radio stuff. <laughs> I love Heron Carvick. Do you know what Heron? Yeah. I know what Heron Carvick looks like. Yeah, do you? No. Uh, don't even you, know. I'll send you a picture of Heron Carvick once we finish this, if okay. you're interested. I don't even know who Heron Carvick is, Rick. Really. <laughs> the voice of the Morpho Brains. In, okay. In the yeah, episode to the Velvet Web. How stupid right, of us uh, not to know that. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a deep cut. <laughs> I'm I'm carrying this podcast, listener. I'm the one with the knowledge. Clearly, I thought we were all up to who. I, you think you know people, and then you find out they don't know who Aaron Carvick is. And it's, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not in a good place now, guys. Just haven't done the homework. It's, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the sad thing is that wasn't even homework for me. That's that's I shouldn't know that. That's just life. <laughs> Basically, that's just life. Life, Heron Carvick, why they're the same thing. Soon they will be completely exposed to the mesmeron. How could you not fall in love with that voice coming out of the brain? That's the exciting thing. Nobody in the universe can do what we are doing. Do we want to work out where we go, where it goes then? Yeah. Uh, so I, so, I so this idea. is really important. This is really mm. important. But I think I shouldn't say why I think it's important until afterwards because it might influence the decision. Okay. Yeah. So let's just put it where it feels natural. All right. Well, for me, obviously, they, it's going to have to be multiple episodes. I can't imagine stretching out to six parts. So it's no. got to be a four-parter. No. God, no. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's, it could be adapted into a kind of a base under siege. So I thought maybe go for the, the first proper base under siege story, which is the moon base, and stick it in there. Mm. And have a bit okay, of a, base, a kit, kit peddler work on it. Yeah, having that's a lot. That's a lot of companions, though. We have mm. to we have to make into. We've got one companion. We have to split into three companions. Well, I mean, that's the same problem we had in the moon base. It's fine. With Jamie can yeah. get bumped on the head. Or we'll just fuck Jamie and, and Polly just makes coffee. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, <laughs> job and to be well, fair we're going to need to we're going to need to expand it if it's going because it's only it's I'm, not well, a huge I'm, well, I'm, well i'm done with the moon base paul what mm-hmm. say you um yeah i'm, I'm happy that, i mean my mind immediately went to zoe but my mind always goes to zoe oh huh? uh, well yeah. Yeah, yeah she is never far from my thoughts <laughs> you get the gamut from paul tonight from the <laughs> elephant man to avon <laughs> didn't we quote that? Didn't we quote did. that just the yeah, other yeah. week? I'm sure yeah. we did. Eventually, eventually, it'll become one fantastic melange: <laughs> the elephant Avon. <laughs> Can you imagine Paul Darrow as the elephant man? That would be yes. Cool. <laughs> well, now you've all been so very kind. Oh, my own teacup. So, <laughs> that would be great. So, why I thought it was important is oh, that yeah. because of the very found footage nature of this story. If this yeah. story doesn't exist, if we've got telly snaps. Mm. It's yeah. going to be so much more difficult, mm. you know, to interpret. We've got half and half here with the moon sure. base. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Moon I just, it just occurred to me because it's, you see, the thing is, I don't think the fan footage thing is actually carried over very well in the original one, in the Capaldi one. I don't I think it's done very well. No. Um, <laughs> so it doesn't really matter all that much. But I thought to myself, actually, if, if the 60s one does heavily feature that one, it's completely innovative for the 60s. Two, if we've only you know, if we haven't got it, it's really going to be impacted. It's not like Marco Polo, where you can kind of yeah. you know, the words sell it. Problem in the sixties, Marco Polo, and you're fine. Yeah, the problem is in the sixties with a big, heavy four or five line cameras is they literally wouldn't be able to do that point of view thing. Yeah. Where they cut for different characters looking at you each other. They just on film though, like Spearhead. Yeah, if you had the money, mil. they're not going to spend that money. Well, well, we've got padding, haven't we? Well, you write it cleverly. When they will have to be clever then, won't we? <laughs> I was going to be clever by saying, let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the cleverest option. But, but, okay. 
you could always have a, a variation, uh, you know, of the of the pedestal camera being somebody's point of view and crashing in the edge of the yeah, tits yeah. everywhere. It's just you can't try and do the whole episode in like three takes, and uh, it's uh, it's a recipe for disaster, isn't it? Well, you can though because that's what they did actually in the sixties. That's the perfect time where you do the episode in three takes because that's what they were used to. Yeah, I'm saying if you're doing it in three takes, you can't oh, do the point of view thing. You can't do the yeah. thing. With... Well, you could. Well, all right, you shift the point of view. It's not. It's a character point of view. Then the camera's a character. There are three different characters yeah. that the camera can become. Uh, Which final story is it that's got like a, a point of view shot in it? Not the Daleks, Daleks but some, yeah. something no, something else like a person's point of view. I can't think what it is now. There is definitely one, but I can't think of it. No, it's gone. Mm. <laughs> I'm sure there's one that. I mean, you know, they could do it for a scene, but not for like four episodes. It's, uh... Yeah. The rest of it. <laughs> let's let's evolve the story. All right, let's okay. see what happens. Let's yes. see where the ram takes us. Let's see yes. where the ram takes us. Okay, let's before, before jo- Oh, it is Morris Barry though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Actually, actually, although although they all say Morris Barry they didn't enjoy working with him much, it, he actually delivers some quite good oh, stuff. Perfectly yeah. good. Yeah, workman like you know. director. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, doesn't do anything terribly wrong. He's good with atmosphere, mm. both in Moonbase and Tomb. Yeah. Possibly less so than the Dominators. Do you collect Doctor Who? Do you have Doctor Who items and you don't know that you collect Doctor Who? For all things in the Doctor Who collecting world, tune in to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast, a Direction Point Network podcast. I am Larry Van Mersbergen, your host, and I have been collecting Doctor Who for 41 years. We have popular features like collection protection and the most outrageous offer. Anywhere you get your podcasts. You're listening to Time Ram. And whatever you do, keep time ramming. Are you ready to travel through time with us? Then check out Traveling the Vortex, a Doctor Who podcast. For nearly seven years and more than 500 episodes, we've traveled from one end of the vortex to the other, making different stops with different doctors, reviewing everything from TV stories to audio plays, from books to comics, and more. Sean, Keith, and Glenn take you on a journey through 50-plus years of Doctor Who episodes and spinoff materials. You can find us wherever you get your podcasts, so be sure to check us out. And now, we're a proud member of Direction Point, a Doctor Who podcast network. You're listening to Time Ram, a Direction Point podcast. We open on uh, Gagan Rasmussen. Yes. He's in orbit around Neptune. I, I wouldn't open on Gagan Rasmussen. <laughs> You sure? Yeah, you might be tempted. I'm uh, not. No, <laughs> money doesn't exist. <laughs> Play, of course, by the legendary Reese Shearsmith. Yes. Warning us not to watch this episode, uh, which is kind of him. Um, and uh, we. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's a good moment to sink in. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was a, that was a sweet one. <laughs> that was a very sharp scalpel. <laughs> Didn't even see it go through the flesh, and then suddenly, ah. Oh. <laughs> Uh, we establish that this is the 38th century and he's all alone and we kind of then we cut to his rescuers um, all of whom we should probably cast at some point Um, but uh, yeah we get to see them they're landing in I guess the spaceship they got a spaceship of some kind some kind of spaceship Um, Mm -hmm. so uh, we've got the various guys there there's Chopra who's uh, we're going to see the spaceship because we're going to pad it out yeah yeah and it's going to go yeah. yeah, on strings. <laughs> yeah, like in the moon base. Um, yeah, I mean, it's probably actually not going to be on Neptune. It's probably going to be on the moon or something, isn't it? Um, that's a bit more sixties. Let's make it on the moon. Yeah, it's the moon base. Yeah, yeah. We've got we've got the sets anyway, so let's. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we can get all the shots of this. Do you not moment. need that gravity crush element later on, which wouldn't happen on the moon? Isn't there a sort of crushy yeah, gravity, they, they do, gravity they, crushy? They're in crushy orbit shirt. around Neptune. They're going to crash into Neptune. I think. Yeah. 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 Well, we've got the Gravitron set there as well, yeah. which creates gravity. <laughs> yeah. Well, we need so, the, big, the big set, don't we? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. You know, this might actually benefit by being a more of a mashup than we ever normally do, as in we kind of use elements of the moon base. Yeah. Because yeah. I can see this setup fitting. Yeah. If we've got to stretch it. Yeah. And we do have to stretch it. Um, My Christ, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> by by yes. mighty Zark one, we have to stretch it. Um, <laughs> it's, it is thin on story, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's thin on incident. Yeah, yes. There's a, there's a few set pieces, and that's about it. Um, yeah, yeah. There's more in the moon base. Oh, yeah. there's more. Yeah, you know. Uh, hmm. So yeah, maybe we should start casting. Anyway, Rasmussen. Who we who we sit on Peter Glaze, or, or <laughs> is that where we're going? 
<laughs> Grown Crown. I'll go with Peter Glaze. I haven't got anything <laughs> apart from Peter Pratt <laughs> or Gabriel Wolf. Yeah. <laughs> well, give the boy a chance. Uh, <laughs> my entire casting of Peter Glaze was based on the fact that he wears glasses. That was the only thing. <laughs> You gotta have this a the level of analysis you, know, you get in time. Right? Have some logic behind it. That's fine. Yeah. That's good. Yes, that's more than I've got. So uh, yeah, we cut to his rescuers, who are led by Commander Nagata. She's yes. a, a, a young commander. So you've got Chopra, who's got a bit of an attitude. Deep Ando, who's uh, considers himself the joke of the pack, and then uh, Four Seven Four, who is a grunt. That's just described as a grunt. Peter Glaze should be Deep Ando then, if he thinks he's the joker of the pack. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Bumbling in the background, falling over things, going, ah! Oh. Um, that's, is that very Peter Glaze? I don't know. Crackerjack! Really, is it? <laughs> yeah, that's all I can remember. And and the naughty censor, right? Yeah. Um, who, who's, who's a kind of bumbling comedy type from that? Not Clive Dunn. Maybe Clive Dunn. <laughs> we've had Clive Dunn. Dunn. I think we've had Clive Dunn, haven't we? Yeah. We can have Clive Dunn again. Well, I suppose we could, yeah. yeah. Well, all right. Yeah. Find someone better. Bernie Clifton. Bernie Winters. <laughs> and Bernie Snow Winters. Bits. 1960s Bernie Winters. 1960s Bernie Winters. 1960s Bernie Winters. I'll go on until you agree. 1960s Bernie Winters. I wasn't lying. Bernie Only Winters I... in the half shell. Yeah, power. Gonna, yeah he, he's got to have Schnorbits with him. He's not going to have Schnorbits. There's no place for Schnorbits. <laughs> this is Innes Lloyd. He's not going to be accepting Schnorbits. You realise there's Americans listening to this thinking, what the fuck is Schnorbits? <laughs> I'm thinking, what the fuck is Schnorbit? <laughs> Are you? Yeah. Oh, I, oh I it's the ITV. The ITV yeah. again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Schnorbit was, Schnorbit was a massive St. Bernard that Bernie Winters carted around everywhere. Uh, okay. I, I met Schnorbit once. You met Schnorbit? And Bernie Winters, yeah. obviously. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He kind of... It, 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 it was a kind of a two-finger salute to his brother, wasn't he? Because it used to be in, like, a double <laughs> act with his... It used to be Mike and Bernie Winters. <laughs> Oh. And and they like split up on on bad terms, and so, he basically so he replaced him with the big dog. <laughs> oh, excellent, Bernie Winters. That's sweet. Oh, I love that. I had no idea about Schnorbit. <laughs> well, Baz, I had more idea than Baz, oh, but yeah. um, and who now has slightly more idea than American listener, um, <laughs> who's listening to a different podcast now. Anyway, yeah, we've lost them with the whole um, Schnorberama. <laughs> so, yeah, what the hell were we talking about? Uh, Sleep No More. It's an episode uh, of Doctor um, Who starring Peter Cole. It is going to be one of those episodes. It's absolutely <laughs> going to be one of those episodes, yes. <laughs> that character, <laughs> the Joker in the pack, whoever mm. he's called. Yeah, so but can we have Bernie Winters then? Why not? You know. Uh, Great. I'm, I'm not hugely invested in Deep Bando. This guy's maybe, maybe, maybe this is why Mike was annoyed, because Mike wasn't cast in, in Sleep No More yeah. uh, on the moon. Uh, and maybe that's what started. It's odd because Jewish I'd be annoyed if I was cast to sleep anymore. But uh, and you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not if you're a working actor. Oh, this version is going to be great. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, the the captain. What's she called? N- Nakata. Or Nakata. Something? Yeah. Nakata. Um, she's she's got a questionable Geordie accent, hasn't she? Not as bad as yeah, uh, yeah. Mark of the Rock. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's not. She's no. She's no hold harder. But but um, it's a bit. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit. She it calls was a some, bit. It was a mm, bit. Yeah. She calls yeah. somebody pet in the first thirty seconds, as if yeah. to go. Yeah. Oh, the Geordie. Do you get yeah, it? Geordie. She actually. She, yeah. she actually would have a spear ship. Yeah. Yeah. Spearship, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, they're not going to allow a Judy on telly in 1960s. Unless it's James Bolam or Rodney Buse. James Bolam or Rodney Buse. <laughs> yeah. Neither of them are Geordies, though, aren't they? But they did play Geordies for years. <laughs> they did, yes, but that but that's not the same thing, Barry. Yeah, um, that's the 60s. Yeah, there's that's cultural they're, appropriation. <laughs> uh, they're authorised BBC Geordies. Yeah. Well, is it going to be James Bolam, then? I'm just thinking of Helen Mirren. <laughs> but, uh, well, yeah, it could be James Bolam. <laughs> Doing a Geordie accent. <laughs> I'll pay to watch that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, right. Okay. So which one is it? Bolan or Mirren? Uh what a choice. Bolan is more likely, probably, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's, it's, he is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I it's mean Mirren's quite likely at this stage. This is 1967, isn't it? If it's Bolan, we've got to have him at some point going, You can joke. <laughs> because in the, if you watch the likely lads, he's constantly going, wow. You can joke. He's gonna be constantly having an accent off with Ben and Jamie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is going to be incredible. <laughs> this is not going to have been sold to America. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, you know, they've taken one listener. I have no idea. I have no idea. Yeah. Not a clue what any of them are. Uh, yeah, it's, she's not really going to be called... Or oh, he's not okay, really going to be called... Bowling. Okay, okay. Yeah. He's not going to be huh? called Nagata, though, is he? He's probably going to be no, called something else. they're going to be less multiracial. Than yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So they did try the multiracial thing in uh, the Moonburst, didn't they? they sort of French yeah, Inner's Void, yeah. Void era is quite good for that. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. Uh, from yeah. memory. I, oh, yeah, okay. I mean, you get Kemmel, you get Tobin. Um, there is that. Yeah. But in, yeah. terms, it, in terms of the, like background casting for as well, yeah. they, they try to... Mm. They do, they do sort of tend towards the Mamma Mia Italians, though, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dido. <laughs> Yeah, isn't yeah. there a, isn't there that sort of Italian in the moon base as well? Uh, I, I, no, he's a Frenchman. Oh, Frenchman, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, but he is actually French. Yeah, he, he's right. played by a genuine Frenchman. Yeah, he's actually French. Wow. Yeah, he's played by a genuine Frenchman. Yeah, that's not a comedy accent. No. That must have been that must <laughs> have been a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> they can't have been deliberately trying to cast somebody of the right uh, race. <laughs> so maybe we should make Chopra then uh, a comedy Italian. Um, <laughs> Tito. Tito. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, in the Tenth Planet, just to diverge again, huh? Tito have got some quite risque posters up. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. they look, I mean, you can't see them in great detail, but you can kind of see them. Tito will go, hang on a minute. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of that, though. I mean, if you look at the goodies, Bill's quite clearly got a poster of a topless woman on his wall for quite a lot of the episodes. <laughs> yeah. In the early ones. But then again, I suppose the early ones, it wasn't really aimed well, It was quite late night, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah, it wasn't considered a kid's yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the 70s, they did a bit more of that kind of stuff, didn't they? But, uh, no, yeah. I'm just slightly amazed that William Hartnell didn't stall with it and go, BAM, this filth! And tear the set down. You know? yeah. <laughs> Punch the actor playing Tito and storm off. <laughs> Come back like four weeks later when I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I want to paint a wrong impression of William Hartnell. Mm. Yeah. So what are we going with for Chopra's character? Are we going for Tito or are we doing something else? Mm. What does the character do? You see, the Chopper. trouble I'm having is I can't remember what any of these people do. <laughs> I watched it last week. Yeah. Chopra's still fresh in my mind. Okay, well, the only real defining Gone. characteristic of Chopra is that um, he's uh, he's fancied by this grunt, 474, who oh, yeah, thinks he's grunts. pretty. And it, he so doesn't reciprocate. Yeah. Hmm? Could have done so much more with the grunts. Yeah. The grunts are going to be the monsters in this, aren't they? Yeah. Probably, yeah. It might have several. They're going to be the... the yeah. The trout and type monsters, they're going to be um, kind of like the chameleons. Yeah. I mean, they try yeah. to be progressive. Not here. grotesque. They cast a, a trans actor as the 474, but yeah. then they just have it as a really grotesque character, which, you know, it's a bit of a. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Kind of a misstep. Mm. Yeah. They're going to be rubber. I mean, they're going to be rubber or vinyl or something in the 1967. They're going to yeah. be costumes like the Cybermen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, the Cybermen, the chameleons, the, the, the might have some kind of thing. Maybe a bit Auton like, a bit kind of blank. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I was thinking, a bit sort of out of the unknown ish, you know, with like yeah. a number on his head or something. You know, yeah, and, uh, those yeah. Guys with shaved heads and do that kind of thing. Maybe. Could you, yeah, could you be guys on makeup? I mean, the trouble is with this story, we're going to have real trouble doing the sound effects in 1960. I mean, real fucking trouble. Yeah. Doing yeah. any of the sand stuff. I was looking at that just going, no. <laughs> <laughs> No, it can't be done. Literally, they can't, you, it can't. You, we can't do that. Yeah, yeah. Unless you're talking stop motion animation of kind of wet sand, is the only way I could think of approaching it, uh, which would have been hideously expensive. Good. Yeah. I yeah. think they're just so, being vaguely sandy looking costumes on the monsters. They're not great monsters anyway, are they? They're, they're, I did. I, yeah, yeah. It's uh, going to be, unimpressive. you know, you're not going to get, it's going to be the monsters, the sand monsters from the start. They're not yeah. going to be anything other than uh, yeah. monster costumes. Yeah. Um, they're not going to be. The, the, Knee particle systems in 1967. Yeah, yeah. No, we're kind of. Have we finished casting them? Did we actually cast them, or did we just run out? Did of we cast the grunts, or did we just get bored with that? <laughs> Scott <laughs> Gorman. Yeah, right. just the rest of them is like uh, yeah, just, stunt men. Yeah, 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 yeah. Terry Walsh. Yeah. Terry Walsh. No, nah, he wasn't around by that. Oh, point. no, he That's wasn't, was he? No. 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 Derek Ware. Derek Ware. Yes, yes. Yeah. Derek Ware. But it'd be expensive if he's just standing around doing that. There'd be extras. Mm. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, four seven four gets lines, so at least one of them's got yeah. an actor. Oh, so. yeah. Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren. Uh, uh, is um, she available? Uh, yeah. Is she finished doing Hero Stratus by that <laughs> point? You know, she's around. She's around. Uh, who would it be? Who would it be? Who would it be? Come on, let's let's think logically of the time. Who would the, who who would you cast in that part? Mm. It, yeah, it'd probably just be an actor, wouldn't it? Yeah. An undescript mm. actor. Mm. Well, yeah, um, I don't even know who played Tito, so I, I don't or, know. Or, or, or would it be, this is the honest word here, would it be Sonny Caldinez? Probably. Is the, the, it could be, the, yeah. Yeah, the grunt, because it's going to be like a grunt. big, big, you know. Yeah, because so. was Big, baldy guy. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, sprayed silver with a number on him, exactly. I think the out of the unknown analogy is a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Would, yeah. it, would be a, it wouldn't be a costume, it would be a makeup. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Sonny Caldinez then? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Funny, yeah? Great. Yeah, that's Sonny Caldinez fits with that on the rugby. Sonny Caldinez. Keeps his moustache in the jar by the door. <laughs> These guys, their army unit, they've come from Triton in the original split. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, yeah, obviously they're going to, they go in, they start exploring uh, this base, mm-hmm. uh, which, you know, I have to say the corridors look really, really nice. The sets yes. are brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Not going to look like in the 60s, it's going to look a little bit, yeah. a little bit more wobbly. I think it's going to look you know. like a moon base. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's just let's just use those sets and just sort of move them around a bit to make corridors and stick. Yeah. I think it's a fair approximation what it'll look like. Yeah. Um, there's no crew around, uh, but then uh, the Doctor and Clara just pop out an error. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is kind of probably the 60s isn't going to do this. We would have lengthy TARDIS scene. Yeah. Doctor and Polly and Ben and Jamie. Yeah. And Jamie. Yeah. Landing on the moon. All four of them. All yeah. the moon. <laughs> All fucking four of them. <laughs> 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 yeah, so yeah, ooh, the moon. Yeah, so we're basically transposing the scene from the moon base. Basically from the moon base, yeah. It's great. Basically, nice same, isn't it? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Davis doing the work for us there. Thank you, Jerry. That's, that's great. That's like half an episode that we've sorted out. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. And they get, yeah. they get they get they get their excellent space. Well, they don't get their spear suits on, do they? Because they're in, in a base. Yeah, they can get their spear uh, suits on. Let them get their well, spear or on. unless because we've got a pad, it they materialize exactly where they materialize in the moon base, and they have to yeah. walk to the base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. pointlessly. Yeah. Because um, it's the moon okay, cool. and it's the sixties, we we're really excited about being on the moon. So that's you know. true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Cool. So they're going. Yeah. Oh, the craters and things, <laughs> no. um, which looks great in the thirty snaps. It's all we've got of this episode of Sleep No More. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> some nice atmospheric lighting in the corridors. He was turned the lights yeah. down. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, I, I love the look of the scene in the um, in the storeroom in episode one of the Moon Base from the telesnaps snaps with with the guy who's who's going at something, Ralph. Um, yeah. uh, and you know we've, we've got a photo of the side man reaching out to him but it looks really dimly lit in the telly stuff yeah. atmospheric yeah creepy. yeah uh, like that. so that's a good scene yeah. maybe maybe something like that happens maybe we'll just invent a character like Ralph mm-hmm. who can yeah. go and, and get kind of you know fingered by a side man and we've got that photo <laughs> can I get and what we've got, and the, you know what you heard what I said <laughs> I'm not recanting <laughs> I'm having to do sleep no more um, <laughs> I'm angry <laughs> I'm not getting that on a T-shirt. I've been fingered by a Sandman. Another song, fingered by a Sandman. I know, I know. It's really, it would be really serious, actually. You'd have, you'd have eternal rupture, which it could be really quite bad. That would be delicate. You'd have to go to hospital. What would you say? Wasn't that one of uh, Jenny Agatha's lines from Logan's Run? I've been fingered by a Sandman. <laughs> Oh, now I'm thinking of Jenny Agatha and Logan's run. That's not helping with the whole dynamic <laughs> no, no, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's distracting. Yeah. Uh, we even have a cast Jenny Agatha in anyway. Yeah, we should do. Yeah. It's not going to be in this, though. <laughs> not going to be in this, no. <laughs> nah, we'll, we'll save for something. This will waste Jenny Agatha. This <laughs> should be great as like Petra in Inferno, except that's exactly yeah. the time that Inferno was being made, really, so it won't be then. Mm. Uh, anyway, yeah, let's not, let's, not, let's, not get, let's not get all over Jenny Agatha. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be terrible. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Jenny Agatha. So yeah, the Doctor and crew they make it to this place and mm-hmm. uh, presumably run into these uh, uh, these rescuers, this this little army crew. I'd rather I'd, no, there wouldn't be. Forget it. Sorry. Well, I was going to say on the way to the base, it'd be nice if like a Sandman rose up from the dust, but I thought that's moon dust. That's not sand from eyes. Yeah, let's not get started on the sand with eyes thing. Yeah, but yeah, okay. We're yeah. going to have to. They did <laughs> right. in the episode. It's not my fault. <laughs> Look at Gator, it's not me. Yeah. I didn't write uh, to <laughs> So, <laughs> so uh, they haven't got psychic paper, so immediately they get arrested, presumably. Yeah. And the question is, what the hell are they doing there? Plus, this lot are probably quite sort of militaristic. They are in the 60s. Mm. When they do the military, they're kind of, they're still Second World War 60s. You know, the, the soldiery is still a thing. Yeah, yeah. People have done their uh, national yeah. service. They know, they know what's going yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Apart from the one really camp extra at the back who just doesn't know how to hold a gun. Because <laughs> this is Doctor Who. And that happens. Yeah. That's a thing. Yeah. 
the really long haired one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the one yeah, the one who hasn't cut his hair, hasn't made any kind of effort at all. <laughs> He'll be playing every other unit soldier in the seventies. Um <laughs> And Ben would just kind of shout out his uh, his name, rank, and serial number, wouldn't he? Because which, he, which he seems to do every time they meet soldiers. Yeah, straight away he goes military at them, which I think would be quite you know reassuring for the military types. Yeah. Yeah. Except they're future military types, so they might just go, what the fuck are you saying, boy? <laughs> You're in the Navy, what are you doing on the moon? <laughs> <laughs> no water here, you twat. <laughs> get back there. Get back oh. in your ship. Oh. Have some jelly deals. It probably is worth mentioning in the original episode. This is all POV footage. It's from the, the yeah. helmet cams, or supposedly from the helmet cams. Point, 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 point. Has no. Jamie fallen over by this point? I think and Jamie's fallen over. He's he's, uh, he's, 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 as in the movie. Yeah. So, so he's out. Great. Okay. So yeah, he's. Yeah. So straight away they have to. So okay. So so Trouton gets all commanding and goes. Listen, we have an injured man here. Mm. Um, and and he, oh. he just bustles through. He takes command. He goes goes and finds the medical bay. Gets Jamie on the bed and gets him stabilized. Yeah. The phantom paper. <laughs> and when Jamie's going on about the Phantom Piper and so yeah. on, he's going, no, he's going on about the Sandman or something like that. The, 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 oh, the, the, sand, sand sand man. the famous Highland <laughs> Sandman that we've all heard of. Um, like we'd all heard of the Crimson Piper, oh. in fairness, but yeah. The oh, Crimson Sandman. <laughs> oh, the Tartan <laughs> Sandman. Put sand in your eyes. I think they can why. <laughs> <laughs> you go blind in the morning. <laughs> 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 so good. Oh, sorry, sorry, Scotland also. Particularly if Jenny Agat is in Scotland at the moment, just pass it on to him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the clever one, you're the potato one. Uh that's probably a fair chunk of episode one that we've got sorted out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is a good then, look. Yeah. Uh which is good because then they see some of the creatures, the, the monsters. The creatures. The monsters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and obviously we've got end of episode one. Yeah. And they run away. Yeah. yeah. End of episode. Yeah. Yeah. Handy. So, uh, Do they no. run away dragging Jamie on a gurney? Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Is Jamie on a gurney for the... Is he like Chekhov? In Star Trek <laughs> yeah. 4? Is he just being wheeled around every room? Oh, dear. <laughs> Feeling a bit bilious. <laughs> I'll, be, uh, I'll be needing some coffee just to set that up. <laughs> Maybe they leave Jamie in sick bay and then they, they can just... Yeah, don't know. All our versions of, of Jamie, like four octaves higher than Fraser <laughs> Hines or any Scottish person ever was. That's how Jamie talks. Oh, oh dear. Um, so, right, okay, good. <laughs> so the reeling, okay, well, this is, this is great. Mm -hmm. This is a bit like the Seeds of Death is Trout running around corridors like a madman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and um, Ben and Polly are manhandling Jamie's gurney. Yeah, well, they're um, kind of they're split up at this point. Maybe they go different directions. Um, right. Certainly, in the, in the original episode, Deep Ando runs off by himself, gets lost. Uh -huh. Oh, he's Deep Ando. He's Deep right. Ando. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't like him. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> you don't have to not like him for long. I don't like him. <laughs> and the rest of them, they kind of hide in the. I think is um, well, it is the medical bay, isn't it? There's some kind of medical bay that they have yeah. to hide in. Yeah. ER or something right. like that. And they close the Different door. Medical bay. They close the door. Yeah. And uh, that's when we get the, the problematic bit where the hand turns into sand. Yeah. 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 Well, it may, maybe it might be, doesn't happen. You do an instant thing, then it'd be kind of like a flash, and, and then you cut to the floor where they're pouring sand on the floor. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. That, yeah. that kind of happens in something, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, like in Sapphire and Steel, <laughs> sorry, Bass. You know. Um, oh, ciao, man. Come on. <laughs> Where in, in Adventure Three, where where the the, the baby that grows into man yeah. touches things and the turns, isn't there one where he touches a glass and then they cut to it like yeah. sand being poured? It would be like that. It, it, yeah. Mm. So you do an instant kind of cut type thing, yeah. um, and it's just instantly sand. Mm -hmm. And you can do that when they touch someone as well, maybe. Mm. Yeah, that would work. That's feasible, especially if you're doing that on film. Yeah. You do you do sequences like that on film? You you just would. Yeah, yeah. Complex yeah, yeah, effect no, shot. You're doing yeah, it on film, yeah, so yeah. they have got a bit more freedom there. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of pre-filming in the moon base. All, all the stuff in episode three with the, the, the coming out of the um, Cybermen's chests. Uh, yeah, the Cyber That's, That was yeah. all pre-filmed, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. On the moon surface. So it's around this point that they find the Morbius. Morbius? Sorry. Morbius. They mind the Morpheus. Morpheus. Morpheus, machine. yeah. Yeah. It's a bit more realistic. Yeah. Um, it is. Well, oh yeah, it's much more realistic than finding Morbius and <laughs> in Doctor Who. Um, <laughs> Don't leave me down here. There's a new photo turned up today of the making of the brain of Morbius. It's, hey. it's got John Friedlander holding the bust of Morbius and then another effects designer holding the brain of Morbius over the tank of the brain of Morbius. Sorry, the bust of Morbius. <laughs> 
Buster yeah. Morbius, the brain of Morbius, the tank of Morbius. He's been in right order, everything's fine. So, um, <laughs> yeah. It did sound like the setup for a gag. I'm not quite sure. It's, uh, the next picture, of, when that comes out, that's going to be great. Or an episode um, of the South Bank show, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so they got Morpheus machines, and mm-hmm. uh, in the original episode, Clara gets stuck in one. I kind of, I must have turned away from the screen. I, I'm not quite sure how it happens, but yes, yeah. it's going to be yeah, Polly. It's going to be Polly. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> She's just going to yeah. stumble. Yeah. Well, Jamie, we're in the medical centre. Jamie's on a gurney out in the corner, yeah. going. Ooh. Yeah. So we're we're fine yeah. with him. Polly's, yeah. yeah, Polly's in in the in the whatnot. Yeah, Ben's going to be Morpheus. getting really concerned. He's hammering on it. He's trying to get as out. ever. Yeah. As yeah. A, have you noticed how Ben's testosterone levels fly through the roof the moment anything happens to Polly? I mean, oh, a feather yeah. drifts past Polly. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. he's just kind of a fucking kill it. Um, <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. short fused sometimes about Polly. Well, you know, Jamie looks at her and he's like, "You fucking, I love you." Yeah. He really is. He really yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Any time. <mate. laughs> um, <laughs> Which I suppose what he'd really be like. So uh, no wonder the doctor goes to Victoria next. He's kind of like Jesus. Let's have someone something, something, something demure, <laughs> just demure and quiet. <laughs> Jamie can keep occupied and just look, you know, and she won't let him. So he'll be all frustrated and he'll be quiet, and, and I can get on with like <laughs> making recorders. Yeah, they get her out of the machine again. We probably spend a bit longer doing that in the sixties. Maybe the doctor will be flapping. Yeah, yeah. Kind of well, well, let's let's nick from Tomb of the Cybermen. There's a, there's a, like a device that the doctor has to work out to mm. open it properly. There's yeah. all that sequence, and, and yeah. Ben has to like Jamie has to do things at the right time. Ben has to help him out and press those that button on that console over there. And yeah, yeah, they work together, and, and yeah. the soldiers stand around watching them because we haven't got any story for them to do. Nah, I mean, yeah, yeah this is what I'm thinking maybe people should go in different directions. I mean, people, they'd probably do a bit more of that. Um, yeah, yeah, well, why do you want to go off? And, does no one go off and get killed at this point? Uh, Deep Ando is still by himself, he's by himself. What the hell while. is Sonny Caldinez doing? Mostly <laughs> flanging at well, Chopper in the original, um, not in 1967, not in 1967. <laughs> <laughs> he's not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's having some dialogue, maybe he's having some dialogue about being a real being. Well, yeah, the, the the grunts are they're cloned. They, they come from they're growing yeah. hatcheries, mm-hmm. so uh, that, that's why they're a bit uh, yeah, a bit odd. Yeah, you'd have that slightly cybermanic element about their you know the concept of them in 1967 when you've got when you've got the Cybermen being the freshest thing on people's minds and the whole body horror and the whole dehumanization bit. Yeah, yeah, replacement hearts and so on. Actually, they're going to treat this in a different. It's, it's going to be a thing. It's going to be sort of like. Yeah. It's going to be like Brave New World, isn't it? It's going to be that kind yeah, of... Yeah. Those, those concepts were kind yeah. of in the air at that time, so, uh, yeah. Or is it just going to be a lumbering grunt because there's got... We need to fill a story, mm-hmm. but I'm not sure Ennis Lloyd needed to in the same way. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know I don't know what you do with it. Yeah. It just seems that there's an opportunity there that, that isn't exploited. Hello, fellow time travellers, and welcome to the Doctor Who Target Book Club podcast, the only podcast to discuss, in story order, all the Doctor Who novelizations. My name is Tony Whit, and every two weeks or so, I'm joined by a two- to three-person discussion panel, including our so-called expert who's been a Who fan since 1979. That would be me. We also get the views of intermediate, casual, and novice fans who either have never seen the show or who have never read these books until these podcasts, including Dalton Hughes and Alison Fitzsafried. You can find us on iTunes, Stitchers, or wherever you find good podcasts, or even ones like ours. You are listening to the Time Ram Podcast. Enjoy and keep time ramming. Wait, this is probably our big set isn't it so uh, they're, they're going to be sort of trapped in this area maybe there's various mm. things for them to do in there and they can split into teams and try and like, like what things I, um have a biscuit have a biscuit work the gravitron you know try and find uh <laughs> where the crew oh, the biscuits all right i see <laughs> they've got biscuits <laughs> they have biscuits on the moon oh uh, that might be contagious oh no that's that is the moon base <laughs> <laughs> could we bring a contain? Could we bring that in? Could we bring a you know, maybe this sand stuff? This ice yeah, sand is yeah. contagious. In the some doctor's way. very carefully picking some up and putting it in here. Yeah, having to go through, yeah, 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 picking people's yeah. boots off them like that. You know, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Mm. Working it out. Yeah, spending more time yeah. working it out. Yeah, as in the moon base. As in the moon base, trying to work out where uh, this crew is. Yeah, the moon, yeah, the moon base is a really good call, Baz. <laughs> <Thank you>. Yeah, <laughs> it's been incredibly useful. Yeah, let's just. <laughs> 
Let's just make the moon base good. <laughs> so, so, so Polly, so Polly's kind of presumably ministering to Jamie. Polly's Polly's knackered anyway because she's Polly's making the some Morpheus coffee, for a and bit. then yeah, she gets she gets sucked <sighs> into this Morpheus machine. Again, uh, I thought we got her out of that. All oh, right. Well, after we get her out, that's when in the original version, mm-hmm. uh, this is where we start getting point of view shots from Clara's point of view, right? Uh, which is uh, them trying to be sold. But I, I did kind of clock it immediately. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> So I, I don't know how you guys felt about that, but um, it's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard to keep up. Yeah. By this point, I had I, I was trying my best, but it was just oh, you know, it's kind of like the screens are oh, there's the internet, uh, <laughs> or I could go back to writing. I mean, really, wow. So well, yeah, they, they look around in this room and they find Rasmussen. Rasmussen is there. He's in another pod. Yeah, Peter Clay's um, in the pod. Peter Clay's in a pod. Uh, um, yeah. That's warm. That's a warm image, isn't it? That's friendly. <laughs> Peter Clay's in a pod. You can think of that when you get stressed. It's like a kind of stress ball. Peter Clay's in a pod. Oh. Pod opens, Peter Clay's comes out. Hello! Um, no. You know. And is it everything. Ah. Yeah. Well, ah. Bertrand <laughs> White comes past going, ha, ah, ah, ha, ah, ha, you know, and there's cream everywhere. What? <laughs> because, you know, it's just all nice things. But cream's nice, isn't it? <laughs> I can't. I can't hear Rasmussen one. without thinking of Rasmut. Uh, <laughs> you remember Rasmut? Oh, and now I've got my read playing, which is fantastic. <laughs> Uh, what was he called? Alistair Perry. Oh, I'm thinking of running around. <laughs> yeah. Obviously. I've still got my replay again, which is fantastic. Yeah. Alistair Perry. Whatever I'm Alistair Perry. I'll picture Alistair Perry. <laughs> but I can, I can picture Christine Perry, who played Rapunzel in, in uh, the <laughs> Mind Proper. Yeah, yeah. She's never far from my thoughts. Uh, <laughs> really not interested in sleep no more, though. Uh, That's the problem. I'm going to have to put a link on the thing for uh, Alistair Perry. Oh, I can't even say his name now. Alistair Perry. Yeah, cool. And I'll put a picture of her in the car. It'd be great. <laughs> Baz, what are you going to bring to this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Some sand. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, please be quiet. It turns out Rasmussen, he's invented these Morpheus machines. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what they do is they compress sleep into five minutes so you can just keep on working. There's a, quite a lot of satire here about yeah. uh, making people work till they, till they drop. Um, hello. Yeah. I what? just I thought it would go to me, but I thought I'd just not say it for once, however, and you can give me the option. Well, if the Morpheus machines, like you've got about Aaron Carvick, who played the voice of the Morpho brains. <laughs> Shouldn't Aaron Carvick be Rasmussen? <laughs> You wish you, you regret giving me the option. I'll, <laughs> next time, I'll just not... Don't respond next time. Just let me inhale. Let my brain go, no, it's not worth it. Leave them alone. And, and it'll all be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be lovely. Peter Glaze in the pod, Pat. Peter Glaze in the pod. Well, he's out of the pod. They've let him out of the pod. He is out of the pod. He is out of the pod. Yeah. Hello! <laughs> So, yeah, he's invented these machines, mm-hmm. and the doctor says, you've created an abomination. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Chopper's not very happy about me. Either. This is going to be very like the doctor's kind of, um, the way he responds to the, 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 the posh you up machine in the Macro Terror, isn't it? Mm. Straight away, he's going, well, this is disgraceful, and wants to just, <laughs> no, I'm a rebel. I don't yeah. do that. So he's going to have that. The, the second doctor's really going to be against this concept. Yeah. yeah. More so than some. It is a terrible concept. I mean, the idea that, it yeah, is. okay, you just... You only get need five minutes to sleep, so you can just keep working. I mean, it's, like, it's yeah. terrible. I mean, why did yeah. they make the drones that people have been sleep deprived for that long? You know, your brain just switches off, and that's really useful to them. And then you become a slave. You don't have to pay anymore, mm. even mm. something like that, maybe. Yeah. Poor Sonny Candy. Sonny Candy must have worked so fucking hard. <laughs> poor, poor Sonny. <laughs> So, yeah, they have a bit of a debate about his machines. Chopper's not very keen on them either. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, in fact, doesn't use them. And, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah it's around That's so this, evocative, Bass. That's <laughs> around uh, this point mm-hmm. um, that the Doctor posits that uh, these monsters are made from sleep dust mm-hmm. uh, from the corners of your eyes. That's the yep. people sleeping. Room. That's yep. the only reason yep. that this doesn't happen. It's so... 
fucking stupid. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it really is extraordinary. How, I mean, just the numbers. I mean, how many humans, how much sleep in... How, I don't have that much... I don't really wake up with sleep in my eyes. No, I mean, it's like you'd have little monsters about a quarter of an inch tall. Just yeah, so, that, yeah. 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 Down the fucking that. <laughs> um, that'd be great, yeah. Uh, and, you know, um, one foot uh, splot. Yeah. And yeah. It's, there's so many directions they could have gone with this. Maybe it is the crew. Maybe the crew get turned into strange creatures maybe i don't know maybe it's some kind of psychic thing there's so many ways they could have gone that aren't maybe it's the dreams that aren't happening yeah off the top yeah what do you something to do with the deprivation of sleep something a a byproduct of the process like that yeah yeah sleep deprivation turns people into drones like yeah nightmare monsters and then yeah yeah, these things for like the like the id monster from forbidden planet yeah Yeah. something like that but no it's 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 i grot yeah it's i grot it's in um, all honesty, I don't think they would do in the 60s. I think no, the no. series was a bit no. more real science. Of course they wouldn't. Of course they wouldn't. Yeah. They would, yeah. No, Jerry Davis would just throw it out and rewrite it. Yeah, Kit Pender. So he's done he's, that. He's, yeah, yeah. Kit Pender we, said no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He turns people into uh, drones. Yeah, let's, do, let's go else, with that. Yeah. Everyone else said no as well, because <laughs> yeah. obviously. Because, so, yeah. Right, yeah. so we're going with our version. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Room is made of dust and mucus. So hmm. basically these are mucus mm. monsters. Room, room. Yeah, rooms. You don't want mucus. You don't want half mucus monsters. And it, it's so <laughs> bollocks. You've been in this room for ages. <laughs> room. <laughs> oh, room. Oh, it's a room. Oh, oh, I don't oh, like this room, Doctor. I want to go back to my lair. Oh, where's the paper? The movie paper. Right, stop that. Silly. Yes. Good use of room there, though. Paul. Yes. <laughs> nice one. Rehum. Yes. Is it Rehum? It's R-H-E-U-M? R-H-E-U-M? Rehum? I don't know. Rehemui. Yeah. I think it's actually Sorry. mentioned in the programme uh, at mm. some point. But I got the feeling I'm watching it. I thought what they were trying to do was go for a, a don't blink type thing. You know, like, yeah. Oh, or, or listen. Don't sleep, kids. Yeah, yeah, you know, don't uh, sleep, yeah. kids. Yeah, but no. No, no, not, no, no, no. no. It's just, it's just, oh. It's just, <laughs> and it, yeah. Mm, yeah. So that really. That kills really, it, really, mate. Helps an already dying episode, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yes. Yeah. Poor Pierre Capaldi there, pontificating extremely seriously about this ludicrous idea. <laughs> doing um, his best. Doing uh, his very best. Yeah. Doing his very best with it, but yeah. it. As exactly Patrick Trouton would and did yeah. many times. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, the professional actor being the lead. Yeah. Um, yeah going, yeah. all right, it's on me then, and giving it a go. Yeah. But even he, but... when faced with nothing. So Rasmussen's the only survivor on this place because everyone else turned into mindless zombies. Let's go with that. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, good. And uh, yeah, the doctors... and now the mindless zombie things are attacking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mindless yeah. zombie yeah. things. Yeah. And uh, the whole human race is at risk because of this yeah. invention. Oh. So they're all using it. So yeah. yeah. Um, and it's all symbolised by Sonny Caldinez as well. So that's great. He's <laughs> not just standing there doing nothing. He's actually no, no. a symbol. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's about the dehumanisation. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, they should probably have some. And this is changes. what happens with your infernal meddling, yes, all that yes. sort of thing. Yeah, I can cut back to Deep Ando. Deep Ando at this point has a you scene. can, you don't have to though. I can, yeah. I will because right. you know, uh, um, you. yeah, he meets, um, well, he meets GLaDOS. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with GLaDOS. GLaDOS is from a game whose name I forget right now. Let me check. Hang on, I'm actually going to do some research now. Portal, that's it, right? Okay, so. It is a video game Millard, ah. called Portal, which uh, is a really good game. And it features this actress doing the voice of the computer. The computer's uh-huh. the main villain. Yeah. It's called right. GLaDOS. And she's right. really distinctive. Yeah. And uh, she's a big feature in this game. Uh, Steve, right. Stephen Merchant appears in the game as well. So it's really good. Mm-hmm. And then... fine actors appear in video games. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so here. Um... <laughs> Endlessly, no doubt, yes. <laughs> But yeah, Deep Ando meets this door, which is clearly voiced by GLaDOS. Clearly, she must be just doing this scene because they went, oh, let's get GLaDOS to do this, you know. Yeah, <laughs> you would. You totally would. Yeah. yeah. He argues with this fucking door, which is <laughs> a song. Oh, yeah. God, that uh, bit. Oh, song. That bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. I know where we are now. Right. Yeah. The only good thing about the scene is the fact it's GLaDOS doing the voice. That's the only good thing. Right. Yeah. Uh, if, if that's removed for you, if you're not yeah. a game fan, yeah, that that scene was just oh Jesus. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. Never talk about padding in the Trouton era again. Yeah. No, <laughs> really, you know, uh, Christ. So, yeah, uh, he finally gets through the door and then he gets killed. So that was just a complete waste of fucking time. <laughs> but so what are we replacing that with? Well, maybe we should have a couple more characters. We could do a bit of the base under siege thing. This is mm-hmm. probably what's going to be happening in the middle episode. Good idea. Yeah. yeah. Just more, it's, it's more monsters. Off. They're more encroaching. Monsters. They're getting closer, getting closer, getting closer. Yeah. Yeah. More yeah. characters, people yeah. actually, you know, some yeah. actual jeopardy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of levering us through episode two, I think. We're kind of getting, yeah. getting to episode three. Yeah. Episode, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have to, <laughs> we have to get there somehow. <laughs> there can't be two episodes more worth, worth of material in the original. <laughs> It cannot be. <laughs> uh, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could pull a planet of giants. Yeah. Mm. You know, it could be in a Lloyd looked at episodes three and four and went, no, make them one. <laughs> I am in <Innes> Lloyd. <laughs> well, the next exciting sequence is when the original version, the, the ship starts to fall into Neptune. Yeah. Oh, the spearship. Yeah. Don't, we could do a bit of business around the Gravitron. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's going to yeah. explode and. It's going to explode, yeah. All this stuff mm-hmm. floating in the air, and they're trying to yeah. Out. yeah, yeah. It's going to create a gravity pool. Yeah. Well, there's a hole in the side of the base or something, you know. And they, you know they, they all get sucked off. And yeah. sucked. <laughs> you are disgusting. They have an exciting sequence where they're doing this, and then the monsters attack yeah. while they're trying to fix the episode yes. In episode two, uh, yeah. Think of one Trouton. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. Ah, he's not ah, in there with them. Yes. Right, we'll just stick from the horror fan because we're that desperate, we're just taking from everything <laughs> yeah. now. This is what Sleep No More does to you. <laughs> We've ransacked the moon base, we're now just pillaging <laughs> horror fan rock. And it get worse. He went to Marine the Three Doctors. <laughs> Actually, the sand things might look a bit like Sandy Gel Guards, who was a lovely person. Um, <laughs> Sandy Gel <Jeff. laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I knew Sandy. So, yeah, a nice guy. Yeah. I used to thoroughly enjoy that page three appearances in the early eighties. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever happened to her? I think she got sacked. <laughs> she ended up with a BBV production. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah, but that sort of general shape, you know, just yeah. sand. It'd be nice and easy to make. Yeah, Jack, Jack and John Lovell mm-hmm. or short yeah. crafted it maybe, in which case they'll be hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Rasmussen oh, dies. No. Oh, Rasmussen gets Peter attacked. Glaze, Peter Glaze. Glaze dies. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's, no. A, that's a shocking episode three. You just get yeah. a shot of his glasses on the ground. Yeah. Broken. Spinning. Yeah. Sand on. Yeah. <laughs> and then Jimmy falls out of bed onto them. Over the silent end titles, Peter Glaze has broken glass. <laughs> <laughs> Short episode, liking it. Shock value, good. Preemptive for tennis or something. They knew they had to do it like a five minute episode that week. We can go straight to four. Get your razor blade out, edit your tape. Flash and burn. Right along the scan lines where it hurts. Yeah, BBC One's going to inner story saying, You've only given us <laughs> five minutes this week, Innis? Was... Well, tennis. <laughs> there was the state funeral of tennis going on. Yeah. What can I do? You know. <laughs> Maybe it was written by Terry Nation. Uh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's so right. Apparently that's a fallacy. Uh, yeah. Is it? Uh, apparently that's a Donald Tosh invention. Apparently John or Donald Tosh seems to have gained quite a reputation after his death for exaggerating <laughs> a lot. In a right, way that yeah. people who are now checking very mm-hmm. deeply into paperwork kind of don't corroborate his exaggerations. Yeah. Uh, you know, as in Terry Nation's first draft scripts of Dark Master's Ban are available and they're no longer or shorter than any other first draft scripts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, or the, or the sum record, I think, I'm not sure of the script, but, you know, there yeah. is a way of proving no. Um, no. No, no, Donald. No, no, Donald. No. Don't lie, Donald. Don't lie, Don't Donald. Donald. You did well enough. So, yeah, uh, they kind of, they all went away. Uh, the Doctor and Clara and the mm-hmm. Gata hide in the cold store. Uh, ben. Ben, yeah. Ben and Polly. Ben, ben yeah. and Polly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or just Polly. Well, I'm, I'm going to need Nagata there as well. We're probably going to need Nagata there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Nagata, the Doctor, Ben, Polly and Jamie all hide in the cold store. <laughs> <laughs> 
Slim Jim is still in bed. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Yeah, because we just <laughs> yeah. leave him in bed, it's easier. Oh, oh dear. Just left me. Oh, gone again. Gone and left me. Like my laird did. <laughs> Um, this is what the point the doctor starts trying to hack into their helmet cams and someone says yeah we don't have cams we don't have helmet cams and he's like yeah, yeah fine yeah. Um, and, and they wouldn't have had helmet cams in 67 they wouldn't yeah. have had, they had that concept no, no. would they so, no 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 and it would be so, very difficult if they had the concept it would be very difficult to actually show it yeah yeah uh, very difficult yeah mm -hmm. which is why none of this works but um, <laughs> well, what we've got, well we've got tapes instead of we've got audio tapes yeah. real to real audio tapes they're going to hack into yeah <laughs> in ways <laughs> ways <laughs> um yeah i tell you what the doctor polly and nagata are in the store ben and chopper and 474 are out in the corridors running away that way yeah mm -hmm. split them up a bit yeah funny caldinas wouldn't run he just thump, 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 yeah yeah, yeah. Deed. <laughs> it's all a bit scooby-doo this isn't it it's all a bit kind of yeah Monsters kind of it's, appearing from alcoves going. To, to me, the entire thing got is away as well if it wasn't you kids. <laughs> to me, the entire thing is vastly more Scooby Don't. Yeah, it's best I can do. Sorry. Yeah. So yeah, they're heading for the rescue ship. The plan is to get into the rescue ship, take off, and just nuke it from orbit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, they get into a bit of a fight with some creatures. Four seven four mm -hmm. fights them off and kind mm -hmm. of sacrifices him herself so that uh, yeah. Chopper and Ben can escape. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when that happens, I thought about this. Mm, Maybe when uh, that happens, something is noticeable that is going to put the Doctor onto it. Because they're two sides of the same coin, aren't they? The id monster attacking and Sonny Caldinas. Yeah, yeah. They used to be mm -hmm. him. They used to be integrated as one person. They were, you know, that's that's yeah. a function yeah. human. Mm -hmm. So there can be some thing, you know, that the Doctor's going to go, aha, you know, uh -huh. Ben can notice it, or one of them can notice it. Yeah. Whichever mm -hmm. one of the companions is with the grunts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, soldiers by grunts, not the grunt grunts. Mm -hmm. We've well, yeah. got one grunt, haven't we? It was Sonny Caldinas and he's yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. The doctor works out that the Sandmen are blind, and so they just sort of sneak past them. Oh, sneaky, sneaky. We can do five minutes of this, like in the yeah. Moonbase, with the pre-recorded voiceover. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Doctor talking to himself. Yeah. <laughs> which, was, which to me was incomprehensible on audio for ages. I was yeah. actually just sitting there openly saying all these things, what I assumed yeah. the first time around. Yeah. And then eventually find out, oh, it's a, it's a thought. You, know, you never get a thought track of the doctor. Yeah. You very rarely hear the doctor's thoughts. True. Yeah. Yeah. It's unusual. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. So then he twigs it on the don't have cameras. Uh, this is in the yeah. original version. He twigs on they haven't got cameras. We're going to replace this with something different, aren't we? Yeah. They haven't got real to real tape recorders. They haven't got real to real <laughs> tape recorders. All uh -huh. this found footage stuff is <laughs> yeah. uh, it's just from the dust apparently in their eyes. Um, somehow actually, recording. Actually, actually, that solves an awful lot if you just make it found audio. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. Good, isn't it? That's yeah. totally doable and could be really atmospheric. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> It's kind yeah. of like, you know, the, 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 yeah, you man mummy on the tape, things like that. But, uh -huh. but, but you know, hey, yeah. the spooky trout era could be great. Yeah. So Chopper gets killed as well. But no one cares. <laughs> but no one cares. He gets killed off screen. It's really quick and pointless. <laughs> and it's just, yeah. yeah. We Doesn't can get killed off screen in the trout era. No, oh, no, 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 no. Ben, no. Ben's with him. We're going to do something a bit more dramatic here. We'll do something a bit more interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what, but we'll do something. Does, does Chopper become the next one to sacrifice their lives so Ben may live? Yeah, maybe, maybe so, yeah. yeah. Before, before he is the, the Quizak Haderach. It's a sort of chain of sacrifice here, yeah. yeah. Chain of sacrifice, yeah. yeah. We'll do ben, Ben's chain of sacrifice. Rasmussen, by the way, not dead. Not dead after all. Ah, ah. He was dead, but ah, he's still in yeah. ah. the messages. Ah. Yes. Ah. Hello. <laughs> Jack. Yes, I fooled you. <laughs> so he's clearly behind it all, uh, which the mm -hmm. doctor works out around this point as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, the Doctor and the guys with him, whoever they are, uh, also <laughs> goes to the rescue ship. Uh, mm -hmm. Perhaps picking up Jamie on the way. Perhaps they should rescue Jamie. Um, um, he's on his gurney. Yes, yeah, he's on his gurney. They're Excellent. like, charging oh, along with What's happening? <laughs> don't know what's going on. Oh, dear. Not so fast, Ben. <laughs> He's all right, Ben's not there. Oh, Ben's not there. Not yeah. so fast, Polly. That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, eventually they kind of they work their way back to the ship. There's going to be a bit more to in and fro in the sixties, but they get back to the ship. Mm -hmm. We're clearly in episode four by now. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What, what was the cliffhanger? It, what maybe was the it cliffhanger? was. Um, maybe it was the last one who died to save Ben. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah. yeah Chopper doing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dying, dying. <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, Rasmus. Oh, I know. It's like it's, it's oh. like it's like that Macro Terra cliffhanger where there's like two macros at either end. <laughs> and had to do the mirror. Yes. And stuff like that. And yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and they're, they're encroaching. Yeah. Yeah. Very slowly. So, yeah. Very slowly. <laughs> do they make sounds like gel guards? I think they should. They probably should. <laughs> 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 I'm 50. <laughs> so I'm the... winning at life. <laughs> <laughs> so they get back to the rescue ship, and Rasmussen's already there. He's been hiding there behind a wall. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how he got there, but here he is. Yeah. And um, yeah, he's behind it all. He's planning to get the monsters back to wherever he, the ship came from. He, I bet he's got all the tape recorders hidden behind the wall as well. Ah, uh, he's got, he's got a real, tape real, real. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's not his ship, it's their ship. So he's got these yeah. tape recorders. Yeah. He's, he's bundled them up on the gurney. Yeah. He's yep. wheeled them across the moon's surface oh, and then stored did, them. Did, yeah. In right. Ship, was yeah. It, was, is that what happened to Jamie then? Was it deliberate so they could, like, you could fake it was Jamie being pushed across the moon surface <laughs> for Maybe. reasons? Yeah, for reasons. But in yeah. fact, it's a load of tape recorders. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. What's going on, man? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm none the wiser. <laughs> this, is, this is definitely embracing the spirit of 1967, this one. <laughs> <laughs> So it's, they all put the spaces on. Somehow they get back to the rescue ship. They're walking. Yeah, yeah, walking. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, they won't be walking. They'll be going. Ooh. Well, that's another ten minutes then, isn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Tick. Yeah. That's nice, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do this, guys. I feel victory. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he's got another room there. He's got a room behind a big door. Uh, oh, he'd have to have, wouldn't he? Well, so yeah. many rooms. He's got a lot of rooms in the ship. It's not even his ship. It's, it's, it's the roominess. Yeah. Yeah, the room. Yeah, the room. Yeah. There's <laughs> this kind of floating box thing that turns up and it's got this No, there in. isn't. Can we just forget that? Forget that, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. But right. it's it's got a guy <laughs> in this in this room which is he says it's a man who hasn't slept in five years. Yeah. And we will infect everyone with this kind of um sleeping yeah thing. Which doesn't yeah. make a lot of sense. No. But then he traps them in the room with it and then they Maybe have to kind of get it, out. Could it could it be a really, really big tape recorder? <laughs> <laughs> but no, it makes sense because it's the one that's got the signal on. Yeah, yeah but really no, big. It, it doesn't need to make sense at this point because it's a lie anyway. So he's, he's, he's not telling the truth. Chocker block. Yeah, it would look like chocker block. It'd be great. Yeah, quadraphonic tape recorder. It would. Yeah, it'd have really thick tape. <laughs> yeah. Jamie would be for the first time going, look at the size of that thing, Doctor. <laughs> And Patrick Trout will be going, yes, Jamie, it is thick, isn't it? Because he would, because he was Patrick <laughs> Trout, and that's what he'd say. Well, they're trapped in this room with this monster, and there's a yeah. really nice moment where Capaldi says, right, when I say run, which I thought mm -hmm. was really quite nice, given that, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, fair and story. Yeah, uh, yeah, so yep. yep. yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, we'll get that, yeah. Yeah. Good. So they break out anyway. Yeah. And then Nagata into another room. Back into the first room, Nagata ah. shoots Rasmussen. Right, shoots him deep. Nagata? Nagata is well. Is James Bodum? I think. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 He hasn't done much. We're, we're, we're chronically underused, James Bodum, haven't we? <laughs> we have underused him. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. You can yeah. joke. Yay! <laughs> that's the line he uses before he shoots. Yeah. 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 Got a bit of James Bond, haven't you? I don't know what the context is because presumably all he's getting beforehand was. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not buying Rasmussen's story. Mm -hmm. It uh, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't add up. Um, he's talking about like, this guy's like not so much story. going on. At the moment, like yeah. so much of this thing. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, rather than try and work out what's going on, fairly inexplicably, the Doctor gets dragged back to the TARDIS at this, at this point with um, Clara and Nagata, and they all just run away, and it just stops. <laughs> yeah, I see you shaking your head. Well, no. <laughs> Having. Yeah, it's not gonna happen, is it? It's, it's just done. No. Yeah, no. yeah. Um, it's okay. gonna have an ending. Yeah. Well, they use the gravitron mm -hmm. to attract, to kind of bind all the energy creatures together into one thing, mm -hmm. which they then expel off into space. Mm -hmm. um, no, they don't. They send it hurtling towards Earth, and they're going. But that's catastrophic. And the doctor goes, "No, they're all getting their dreams back." Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is, isn't it? And it was because, two seconds. Yeah. Um, that's the sad well, thing about as it. the doctor says at the end of this story, as they go in the tires, he says, This doesn't make any sense. And uh, <laughs> we're, we're with you there, Pete. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. 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 
and we get a final scene where Rasmussen turns up again and explains that the signal is encoded in the video. Oh shit! Then uh, there is the big, there is the, the very big tape recorder. Yeah, to be dealt with. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> there is the very big tape. He says, "I did well, tell you not well, to watch." Well, well, uh, I know, I know what to do. I know what to do. Okay, yeah. Using the gravitron before it burns out. I don't know why the gravitron's there, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's um, just great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they actually managed to summon back together the the kind of spirit of Sonny Caldinez as id monster, now reunited <laughs> with Sonny Caldinez. Yeah. Uh, and he comes back as as a kind of for for you know he's got like thirty seconds of life and he just storms through and he beats that crap out of the massive tape recorder. So <laughs> no more, <laughs> no one else. <laughs> Not again. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's miraculous. It's great. Job. Finished. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah. And they do a thing. They destroy all the sleep machines. It's all fine. Uh, <laughs> explain how they do it. I thought about it. That's yeah. how they do it. Sonny Caldinas. Sonny Caldinas just Sonny Caldinas. Them. Yeah. Slaps it. Like, oh, oh, uh. oh. Everyone yeah. should dream. <laughs> um, You've got to have a dream. <laughs> Make a dream come true. Well, I made some coffee, says Polly, and everyone goes, ha, 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 Polly, you're a woman. Ha, ha. <laughs> and Innes Lloyd goes, this really worked. We should do more stories. <laughs> yeah, like we this. should do more stuff like this. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and lights up another one. And <laughs> sticks a revolver on. And sits back in his <laughs> massive chair, loving it when a plan comes together. <laughs> That's how Innis Lloyd rocked. Ensplainment. 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 Is our version much better or much, much better than <laughs> our, our version is an absolute stone cold fucking classic? <laughs> yes, I think it's just such a shame we've only got two and four of it, but yeah, yeah. 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 the Teddy of one spread. and three yeah. look fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Troughton's got you know, he's found his, his, his place in the role now. Yeah, after, it's a shame after... that all the action sequences were in episode three. That's that's a, that's a pity, but, it is, uh, it is, yeah. yeah. But but you know, hey, there we are, there yeah. we are, and and, and the, uh, the chain of sacrifice, you know, that was that was moving. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be one of those bits of television from the 60s, isn't it? That people look back on now and go, hey, they're all off their tits, you know, when they did that, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but they're not thinking of context. <laughs> <laughs> Context is a thing, yeah. Or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, uh, yeah. Fraser Hines is always amusing about it at conventions. Oh, I just lay on my back the entire time. Ha 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 ha! ha. That sounds like I'm talking about sex. Um, <laughs> Sorry. There's actually one complete sand monster costume still in existence. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a private collection, but you know, yeah. it's, it's there apparently. Yeah. Ian Levine. <laughs> So that was sleep no more, and I don't think any of us will sleep anymore after that. Or actually, probably sleep quite a lot. Mm. This is the point at which we normally run the numbers, but our next episode, you might have noticed, you might have noticed, if you're observant, that Christmas is coming up. You know Christmas, you've hey. had one before. Um, oh, no. <laughs> so we're doing something a bit special for Christmas, and part of what we're doing for Christmas, I won't tell you everything we're doing for Christmas, because um, I probably asked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but part of what we're doing for Christmas is instead of Time Ram, we're doing Space Ram, where we're taking a number of space-themed shows, space-faring shows, and randomly selecting those, and then an episode from those. And the shows that we'll be selecting from are the original Star Trek, oh. Blake 7, oh. Space 1999, ah. Puck Rogers in the 25th Century, Ooh. Fireball XL5. Ooh. I wish I was a spaceman. You are. Yes. And Firefly. Ah. And that comes to 262 episodes. This could go horribly wrong. Shall we find out what we're doing next, then? So, so six series, 262 yes. episodes. Yeah. The number we have, 44. 44. That, yeah. I think, will be Star Trek. Oh, nice. And it is... <laughs> it is the trouble with triples. Yay! Excellent. And the, the series. series. Yeah. One to six. Oh, not one. Yeah. Five. Five. That is 
Fireball XL5. <laughs> Fine, perfect. <laughs> Not a problem. The trouble with yeah. triples is <laughs> Fireball XL5. Oh, okay. if only we'd got Blake 7 then. <laughs> yeah. so, yeah, basically grim, dystopian, quite nasty Blake 7 gets the trouble with triples. It kind of fits a bit with Fireball XL5. Um... What the hell are these things doing on my bridge? <laughs> <laughs> Orac, how fast do they multiply? <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's going to be a thing. We are doing something Doctor who as well, aren't we? So Yeah, we are doing something Doctor who Because there's a lot of interest uh, lately in um, the Peter Cushing films, mm. we're Cushing. looking at a sort of limited ram of um, what would it be like if Peter Cushing's third Doctor Who film was at the Earth's core, oh. in which he's practically playing Doctor the Doctor who. anyway. He is Doctor <laughs> who. Yeah, he just is. Doctor Who with his latest new companion. Yeah. Harold F. Sullivan. <laughs> The second. Played by Doug McClure. Played by Doug McClure, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. it's spot on, it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. and we'll also have a, a couple of other little goodies and sort of... We're doing the goodies as well. Thingy. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have that in the series, did we? No, okay. <laughs> right, so, um, yeah, that's it. That's, uh, that's, uh, that, that was Sleep No More. And yes. if you're not if you're not already asleep, join us next time. And you've all done very well. <laughs> you've done exceptionally well to stick to the end of this. <laughs> that was Time Ram, the Doctor Who podcast. You can follow us on Twitter if you want. You can follow us at Rupert Booth for Rup, at Baz Time Ram for Baz, or at Paul Furry Eight for me. We'd like to thank Ben Jones for the sound. And we also have a Facebook page, or you can join us on our own website at timeram.com. And if you just can't get enough of us, you can subscribe to us on Patreon for exciting extra content. And if you really, really can't get enough of us, you can join us on OnlyFans. Only joking. <laughs> Although, <laughs> oh, I mean, we might not be joking if our energy bills get any higher. Uh, so. <laughs> Ah, politics and porn. <laughs> yes. In one hit. Politics and porn, our new, <laughs> our podcast. new podcast. I'm yes. yes. so, yeah. That would get a gigantic listenership from day one. Yeah. Just the title. But, and, then, and then we'll so maybe we should change the title of time round to that, but still just carrying on about Doctor Who. Yeah. <laughs> we'll keep listening, just going, I'll be getting off in a minute and all finding out who's in charge of the country. One of the two. <laughs> so when they finish talking about Doctor Who, we'll get on to it. And I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> uh, I'm feeling Christmassy already. So yes, Christmassy. the north wind doth blow, and we shall have snow. Yeah, we will. And what will poor Robin do then? Poor thing. We'll never have snow again. The time climate change has done that. We'll never have snow at Christmas again. Oh, uh, you're going to be foolish when we're all snowed in when this goes out. I've been <laughs> foolish before. <laughs> oh, you're going to be foolish. <laughs> Thou shall be foolish. I like it. Oh, you're going to be foolish, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start using that. I think I like it. Direction point. Direction point. A Doctor Who Podcast Network.